Hello friends. This is Revenger What Ifs. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting story on what if Naruto wants to die and but cannot. Here is a short summary. Since birth, all he wants is what the majority wants. The end of his existence. But for him, this is an impossibility. But before we start, if you want more amazing content like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now let's begin the story. Many footsteps were heard in a small alley, but there was not a single light or torch in sight. It was past midnight and most were already asleep. Anbu were on their way to report to the Hokage, while Junins were on the way out for a new mission. Footsteps in the night in a shinobi village were not uncommon. Nobody took notice of the group of villagers running after a boy. Shouldn't you be running? The boy in front of the crowd regarded them with a strange gaze of indifference and shrugged in character to his expression. Do what you want. He muttered, taking a stick to the side of his head and another one sticking through his right upper leg. He didn't scream at all as the villagers continued to pummel him. After a short two hours off beating and knife slashes, the villagers took a look at their handiwork, seeing a pool of blood within it a body with many sticks and knives in it. They all left with satisfied grins on their faces. After a second, Naruto pulled the sticks and knives out and sighed as everything was healed in seconds. Not a single scar remained on his body. He sighed and rose to his feet, taking a look at the blood on the ground. Every day it's the same thing. Deep inside Naruto's existence, a great demon fox grumbled as the boy materialized in front of him. Foolish human, why do you let them torture you so? You can hear them. They say I deserve to die for taking the lives of their mamas and papas. I guess I really did kill them, for them to want to hurt me that badly. His emotionless gaze to the fox never changed. But I guess it's because of you I'm still alive. The fox nodded its head. You are pitiful. You simply bow down to their wishes, while you should be the one torturing them. But they've never did anything wrong to me for me to want to hurt them. Naruto, a nine-year-old human, reasoned. I deserve their beatings. I deserve to be killed. He then locked eyes with the Kaiubi again. But you won't let me get killed. The thousands of attempts at taking your life throughout your young existence has made your body accustomed to my way of healing. The Kaiubi explained. You can not die ever, because. I can not die, ever. The Kaiubi chuckled. No matter how bad you wish to die, you will live forever. Prologue. Naruto. Perform the Bunshin. Naruto, in the back of the class, considered his teacher with a bored gaze. No. Then, you fail. Aruka yelled at the boy hoping this would get a reaction more suiting of a 12-year-old. I don't care. Uchiha Sasuke, sitting several seats away from the blonde, considered the dead last with a look. That idiot. He'll never become a shinobi. I know how everyone in this class fights, except for him. I've never seen him fight. There was one person who could have a small idea about Naruto, although he could not understand the way in which his bugs were speaking. The old language his bugs were using when talking about Naruto were even too old for his father it seemed. One word his bugs spoke of he did know, and he could also feel the wariness of the bugs whenever they let this word out among their incoherent speaking. Shino did not know what his bugs were talking about when they involved, Naruto, but he did know there was something very off with the boy. Sakura grinned as she raised her hand to the ceiling. I'll perform it, Aruka-sensei. Sakura massively looked down upon the blonde Naruto being so stupid, or rather, being so non-caring about being a shinobi. Amino Aruka nodded his head and allowed Sakura to come to the front of the class. On several occasions when Naruto had started attending the academy several years ago, Aruka had found out Naruto was hurting himself with kune from school. Rather than practicing throwing them at trees, the boy pierced himself through his own chest, several times. As if he did not understand why he would not fall down, dead to the ground. Aruka was frozen on the spot when Naruto rammed two kanais through his own forehead but still remained standing. It was then that the boy, back then still eight years old, had noticed Aruka. Flashback. Nay. Aruka sensei. The boy spoke. In class, Mizuki sensei told me that shinobis die when something sharp like a kanai or a sword hits their head. Also, their hearts as well. He seemed to pout. They hit me in the head and in the chest many times, but I never die. He seemed very disappointed at that, on which Aruka's eyes had widened a great deal. Even now, I don't die. Aruka did not know what to say. Are the teachers lying? Or can't I die? With that, the young Naruto turned away and walked home. 
Aruka didn't do anything as several villagers began to follow him down the road, with sticks in their hands. End flashback back in class, Sakura had excellently performed the bunchen technique. Did you see that, Sasuke-kun? She squealed, while Aruka rolled his eyes. That was nothing, Ino yelled. I'll show you how it's done. Aruka sighed. It's gonna be a long day. Naruto was walking home, not at all disappointed at himself for failing the genin test. He sensed someone behind him and sighed, preparing for the next onslaught about to come, but was surprised to feel a gentle hand on his shoulder. Mizuki sensei. Naruto greeted in a monotone voice, his surprise creeping back in a hole in his existence that had not been revealed for a long time. Hey, Naruto-kun. The gray-haired teacher greeted back. I know you can perform the bunchen, Naruto-kun, don't you think you should be genin? Naruto almost frowned, but refrained from doing so. No. Mizuki did frown, however. But, you need to become genin. I know Aruka can be a tough teacher, but he believes in you, as I do. I don't care. Naruto replied, ready to turn away. Mizuki's hand turned him back to face him once more. Listen, Naruto-kun. As a genin, you can leave this village. Naruto's ears were a bit more interested now. Outside the village? Maybe. Maybe I will be able to die outside of this village? Foolish human. Kayubi chuckled from inside Naruto's consciousness. Mizuki grinned, taking Naruto's silence as a success. But it's too late for you to perform that bunshin, though. But I know of a way, another way, to become genin, Naruto-kun. All right. Naruto let out. Tell me. Mizuki grinned some more. Through Naruto's eyes, the Kayubi read through the scroll of seals, the scroll of forbidden jutsus from Konoha. The endless possibilities made the great demon chuckle in ecstasy. Who would have thought this human child would force my healing factory out of me onto him? With endless chakra to his disposal, for his healing, these forbidden jutsus are not lethal for him at all. The Kayubi chuckled loudly in sudden confirmation. Not even the Shinigami can touch him. Pouring as much of his intelligence and chakra into Naruto's brain, he made Naruto learn every technique in that scroll. There is no technique that will free me from my binds. The Kayubi darkly mused. I have already secured immortality through the torture of this human soul. The countless massacres they have created on a single body has increased even my healing rate. This boy, even if he loses his head, simply won't die. The Kayubi watched Naruto learn technique after technique in fascinating, but absurd speed. Yes, though immortality is firmly within our grasp, Naruto and I. We will become more than just immortal. We will become invincible as well. Aruka sensei Naruto confirmed his teacher's presence behind him, without even allowing Aruka to say a single thing. Mizuki sensei told me about the secret way of becoming genin. Secret way? Aruka repeated jumping down and landing in front of the young child. Yes, for me to be allowed to get out of the village and get killed during missions, I will need to become genin of rank or higher. He told me to steal the scroll from the Hokage and learn as many techniques in it as I can. Mizuki. Aruka's eyes widened. Did, did you learn any? Naruto impassively nodded his head. I have learned them all. Aruka almost dropped to his knees in astonishment. Can you show me? Naruto nodded his head again. With every jutsu comes a bit of pain, but it isn't enough to kill me. This one, however, he made a seal, does not cause any pain at all. Aruka recognized the seals. Cage bunchen, Naruto softly uttered. And indeed, Naruto created roughly 50 shadow clones around him. There you two are, came a voice. I'm really surprised to see that you found him faster than I did, but you always were the better tracker than I am. Mizuki. Aruka yelled, ready for anything now. I can only suspect you want the scroll for yourself. Mizuki nodded his head. You always were so smart. He dropped out of his mouth sarcastically, before he turned to Naruto. Demon brat. Hand over that scroll or die. Dismissing all of his clones in slight surprise, Naruto turned to Mizuki, surprise on his face. You can kill me? Mizuki frowned, jumping down. Of course, you brat. You're just a kid, I'm a chunin. Naruto smiled. I won't hand over the scroll, he said. Kill me, then. Naruto noticed Uruka moving next to him. Uruka sensei, what are you doing? I can't let him kill you, Naruto. Not now you've become a genin of Konoha and especially not as his intentions are stealing that scroll in your hands. 
the teacher said as he had a kanai in his hand. Naruto shook his head. Don't worry, Aruka-sensei. If what he says is true, then he will kill me. All will be all right. Aruka was disturbed to see happiness in the blonde's eyes. And Naruto. Aruka managed, appalled at the sick character. Mizuki grinned wickedly. Die. Naruto looked down at the big wind shuriken in his chest and pulled it out. I've had worse wounds than this. Naruto muttered, slightly disappointed as the wound was already long gone. Mizuki's eyes widened, but enraged, he rushed forward and stuck a kanai through the blonde's neck. Ready to grab the scroll, Mizuki was surprised to see Naruto jump backwards and pluck the kanai out of his neck. I won't die from something as small as that, either. Mizuki and Aruka both were surprised to see his neck completely fine again. I am angry, Naruto said. You said you would kill me, but if this is killing me, then you're doing far worse than the villagers. Naruto then glared. But worse than that, you've lied to me. Naruto crouched on all fours, red chakra pouring over his body. I don't like liars. In a cage, inside Naruto, the Kayubi was licking his lips. I love this rage. The being whispered as red chakra was flying freely around his prison. Cage Bunchen no Jutsu, Mizuki was unconscious before he knew it. So I'm a genin now? Aruka took a look at the students in front of him and was proudly reading the lists of genin teams. Sasuke was looking at Naruto, slightly curious as to why he was here as well. Did that dobi become genin? I've never seen him do anything. For him to be here, he must at least know the Bunchen no Jutsu and Henge no Jutsu. Sasuke's eyes narrowed. He had already known he was far more powerful than the other genins here, but he was never able to read how strong Naruto was. He was intrigued. Uzumaki Naruto, hmm. Team 7, Haruno Sakura, Uzumaki Naruto, Uchiha Sasuke. Team 7 was waiting for their Junin sensei. How come he's genin? I thought he was too stupid. Sakura thought as she turned away from Sasuke for a second. Anyway. I'm in Sasuke Kun's team and Ino is not. This is going to become so romantic. Naruto. How did you become Genin? Sasuke bluntly asked, ignoring Sakura's fluttering and walking past her to Naruto. You had to have performed the Bunshin and Henge. Naruto considered Sasuke with an emotionless stare. I did the Cage Bunshin. Sakura's eyes widened. Cage Bunshin? That's a Junin level technique. That's impossible, you idiot. Cage Bunshin? A Junin level jutsu? Sasuke's eyes narrowed. Show me. Naruto shrugged and did the seals. Cage Bunshin. In less than a second, the room was filled with shadow clones. Sakura touched one of them and confirmed it. Un. Unreal. How come you can do this? You're Naruto, the dead last of the class. These are no illusions, they are real bodies. Sasuke's eyes were widened. Real bodies? The chakra this technique must take. His view on Naruto changed greatly with this. Fight me. Naruto undid his cage bunshin and looked at Sasuke. Why? So I can beat you to a pulp? Sasuke declared with a grin on his face, falling in a stance. Beat me. To a pulp? Naruto repeated. That has been done so many times. I am not interested. Sasuke almost fell down due to the weird rejection, while Sakura simply did not understand Naruto's reaction. Huh? I am only interested in someone who can kill me. Naruto continued. You are weaker than a chunin, right? Sasuke glared. What do you mean, you dead last? Naruto's face remained void of emotion as he stared at Sasuke. Yesterday night, a chunin failed to kill me. I don't expect you, a rookie genin, to be able to kill me. What are you saying? At your chunin level? Sasuke yelled, ready to kick Naruto's ass. As if. Sakura agreed. You're nothing compared to Sasuke-kun, Dobi. Naruto did not understand. I am just saying that you can't kill me. I don't see why you are getting so angry. I'll tell you why, Sasuke said as he rushed forward. Nothing happened as a Junin stepped in the room. Three heads moved quickly towards him. Mama. It sure is tense in here. The Junin said. Hataki Kakashi, I am your Junin instructor. Meet me on the roof, he said as he was gone again. Sasuke glared at Naruto. I will kill you later for this. Naruto, surprisingly, frowned at Sasuke. You had better not be lying. He responded angrily, on which both Sakura and Sasuke froze in surprise. 
Naruto moved to the roof, followed by the other two seconds later. The name's Hitaki Kakashi. I have hobbies and am Junin. Your turn, he said to Sakura. After a full minute of mindless blabbering, Sasuke interrupted her rudely. I am Uchiha Sasuke. I dislike few things, but like even less. My dream, no, my ambition, is to kill a certain man. This caught Naruto's attention, Kakashi noticed. Kakashi nodded his head and turned to Naruto. Your turn. Uzumaki Naruto. I like nothing and I hate liars. He then looked at Kakashi. Kakashi looked back. That's it. You don't want to let your teammates know about you some more, or me? Naruto frowned. I don't really care about you or my teammates. He indifferently let out. As long as it gets done. When will we get missions? Kakashi did a double take on that, before he continued. Uh hum, okay. Sasuke and Sakura both glared at Naruto. Before we get to those missions, you three will have to go through another test tomorrow morning at 7. If you truly are genins, you will be able to find me by my chakra. I will explain the rest tomorrow. With that, Kakashi left the roof. Sasuke turned to Naruto, but to his surprise, Naruto had turned to him as well. You would kill me, as you had promised. Naruto said, surprising both Sakura and Sasuke. I expect you will, now. Sasuke rushed forward, hitting Naruto hard in the face. Naruto did nothing and simply considered Sasuke with a hard stare. Well? The blonde said. Sasuke continued his assault, hitting Naruto with his fists and feet at every angle, sending Naruto to the ground several times. Sasuke's eyes widened as Naruto jumped up every time as if nothing had happened. You do realize it's gonna take a lot longer if you only use your hands and feet, right? Naruto let out sending Sasuke a bored gaze. Sakura, meanwhile, was investigating Naruto's face and arms. There is nothing. Not a bruise, no blood, nothing. It's really as if Sasuke hasn't hit him at all. Sasuke had already noticed the same thing. In truth, punches and kicks, Taijutsu in general, was so weak against Naruto's, or Kayubi's healing factor, it didn't even make him bleed anymore. You are Uchiha Sasuke, right? Naruto felt a weird vibration in his forehead as the Kayubi sent him information about the Uchihas. Uchiha Madara. Sasuke frowned. Your reaction tells me you know no Uchiha Madara. What are you babbling about? Sasuke yelled. He knows an Uchiha. I know of an Uchiha Madara, apparently. One who can. Kill me. Naruto asked his own brains, not understanding how he suddenly knew of one Madara. You have a Sharingan, too? Infuriated, Sasuke grabbed a kanai and Naruto grinned as Sasuke threw it at Naruto's chest. Naruto shook his head yelling. No, 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 in a disapproving way as he crouched and let the kanai land between his eyes instead of his chest, piercing him deeply. Sasuke's eyes widened and Sakura almost fainted, but kept standing, because of the shock. Sasuke truly did expect him to dodge or deflect his kanai with one of his own. Naruto calmly pulled the kanai out and showed Sasuke how fast it healed again. Is this all you've got? Naruto let out, his voice getting angry. There was not a trace of any wound between his eyes. Sasuke did not know what to say as Naruto was approaching him now. I told you that I hate liars. You told me you would kill me. Sakura did not know what to do or say as Naruto completely kicked the shit out Uchiha Sasuke. Naruto sighed as he finished after a few minutes, leaving a bloody mess of one Uchiha Sasuke. I will be the one to do the killing if you lie to me again. He exclaimed loudly, jumping off the roof, leaving Sakura alone with the panting Sasuke, who was in extreme pain and with several broken bones. I, I'll take you to the hospital, Sasuke-kun. It was not like he could go there by himself now. They had been walking around town all day, separately, not together. Sakura was shopping without any money, Sasuke was jumping from tree to tree, even trying to jump over trees to reach a tree simply out of reach for him. Naruto simply woke up as soon as he sensed Kakashi's chakra signature. And now they were there, all three of them, standing in front of Hitaki Kakashi. Good to see you three on time, Kakashi greeted. Perhaps next time you could tell us what time we're supposed to meet, Sakura suggested, a slight frown on her face. Kakashi shrugged. As you can see and perhaps even hear, I have two bells here. The Junin said, tapping the bell strapped to his waist once. I will give you half a day to get these bells from me, and then we'll eat lunch. Or dinner. 
He shrugged again. If you get a bell, you become Genin. They all tensed, staring at the bells intensely, even Naruto. If you don't come at me with intent to kill, you'll fail for sure, Kakashi informed. Now, go. Sasuke and Sakura were gone in a second, but Naruto remained. Kakashi narrowed his eyes at the blonde brat before him. The boy remained silent as Kakashi slowly grabbed a book from his pouch and started reading. He started thinking about his students and about what the third had said about them. Uchiha Sasuke from the Uchiha clan. The boy had not yet activated his Sharingan, but he was well on his way with fire techniques. Driven by hate and revenge for his brother, the kid had already turned out to be quite strong. He was also the rookie genin of the year. Even though they're not even genin yet. Kakashi deadpanned. Haruno Sakura was your average academy student. With very little chakra in her system, her chakra control was absurdly high. Being the genius that he is, he already figured out genjutsu was probably something she was most compatible with. Other than that, he didn't see lots of special features for her in the future but he had been proven wrong several times in his life. Uzumaki Naruto was the Kayubi Jinchuriki. Although he didn't know much about him through experience, the third had already told him a little. The boy simply wanted to die. Kakashi had narrowed his eyes at this pathetic character, but realized Naruto's reasoning. He felt a bit sorry for him, even. Other than that fact, the third told Kakashi he would find out the rest during this test. You're a bit off, you know. Kakashi started. Flipping the third page of the Kum Kum Paradise book in his hands. Shouldn't you be hiding like the others? It is useless. Naruto replied. To hide against a Junin. You are more powerful than a Chunin. I've fought a Chunin once. Kakashi nodded. The traitor Mizuki. Beaten to a pulp by this kid. If he thinks he can do the same to me, he's got quite a few other things coming. But you're Junin, perhaps five times more powerful than Mizuki Sensei. Naruto said. I need to become Genin, so I have to get one of those bells. Think you have what it takes, kid? Kakashi asked, still reading. Naruto shook his head. No, surprising Kakashi, but if I do nothing, I accomplish nothing. Kakashi nodded at the logic. Perhaps you'll kill me while I get those bells. Naruto started, but one can only hope so much. Kakashi frowned and shook his head. I already told you to start, Naruto. I have to become Genin, so. Kakashi's book flew out of his hands as Naruto did the unthinkable. The entire area was engulfed with great forces of winds. He's. Kakashi immediately revealed his Sharingan as the winds around him threatened the trees to be ripped out of the grounds and be sent towards the sand village. Sasuke, in one of the trees that were shaking uncontrollably, couldn't keep his eyes open as sand and stones were flying around. What's happening? Sakura was hanging onto a sturdy tree branch, scared she would be sent far away because of the massive wind force. Kakashi's Sharingan eye saw it all. He's actually doing it. He's opening the gates. Naruto's face had turned completely red and his pupils, his irises in his eyes, they were no longer there. It hurts a lot, Naruto gritted his teeth, but it doesn't kill me. Kakashi could barely dodge as Naruto rushed forward, taking three trees with him. Shit. He's fast and powerful now. Opening those gates could very well give him the ability to catch these bells. And without the after effects, Naruto really is dangerous. Crate after crate appeared as Naruto missed Kakashi just barely with every attack he threw at the Junin. How many gates did he open? To think I need my Sharingan for this. A Genin. Kakashi thought. With the area in such chaos, Sasuke and Sakura won't be able to see a thing. He gazed at the attacking Naruto. But he won't let his eyes run astray, he's got me in his sight constantly. Suddenly, the area was completely calm again and Kakashi frowned. Why did he stop? In Naruto's hands, were two bells. I am now Genin, as you stated. There was no smile on his face at all. He threw one of them back at Kakashi. I only need one. Perhaps one of those other two can still become Genin. From what I know, a Genin team has three members and one Junin instructor. If they pass, there will be more genin teams, was his logic. Kakashi caught the bell. He thinks that he will be put in another genin team if Sasuke and Sakura don't pass this test. Kakashi shrugged. Perhaps Sasuke and Sakura will cooperate to get this one bell after they heard Naruto's speech about genin teams. He sighed and hung the bell back on his waist. Very well, you can have your lunch. Naruto walked away. Naruto was slowly eating his food, 
while Sasuke and Sakura were both tied to stumps. Kakashi stood in front of them. You two don't get to eat since you didn't get the bell. Kakashi said, with his hands in his pockets, before turning to Naruto. Naruto, don't give them any food. Naruto simply shrugged. We'll continue this test for another three hours after this dinner break. The Junin explained. I'll be back in half an hour. With that, the senior was gone. Naruto sighed as the stomachs of the other two academy students grumbled. Naruto threw two kanais at the ropes that had bound them. Eat. I've had enough. Naruto said as he rose from the ground and left the food on the ground. Why? Sakura asked quietly. Since yesterday, where Naruto had beaten Sasuke to a pulp, Sakura had been very cautious around the blonde boy. Kakashi told you not to. It's not sure whether he will be my sensei. Naruto interrupted. Genin teams consist of three members. You two are skilled, more so than the other students in our class, if you ask me. If you two don't become Genin, I don't think many others will. He sighed. If I want to be Genin, I need two others to be Genin as well to be put in a team. Sasuke suddenly frowned. The Genin teams have already been formed, remember? We are already a Genin team. We just need to. He suddenly realized something, but Sakura cut him short. I get it. Kakashi Sensei's test. Naruto. A voice suddenly came from behind Sakura and Sasuke. Both turned to see Kakashi standing there. Naruto regarded Kakashi with a non caring look. What is it? Why did you give them food while I told you not to? He calmly, but deadly, asked. Naruto sighed, sitting down again. He was not at all intimidated by Kakashi's demeanor. They hold higher chances of becoming genin than the other students I know. He reasoned. Except for maybe Aburame Shino. Kakashi frowned, before turning to a grinning Sakura and a ticked off Sasuke. Kakashi sensei. We are a team already. Kakashi sighed. The smart girl figured out his test. Well shit. Now he had to pass this ridiculous team. The third turned to Naruto. Uzumaki Naruto. You are a hero. So, heroes need to be killed? Naruto questioned. The old Serutobi sighed sadly. A hero is someone everyone respects, everyone looks up to. He will give his life for the village. Give his life. Naruto repeated. I don't know why, but I love this village, and I would give my life for it. The third looked a bit disturbed as he realized Naruto didn't get the meaning behind the words he had spoken. You don't understand. Who are you? You are the first person. No, the second person who speaks to me in this, strange way. Strange way? The old man asked. What do you mean? Usually, when people talk to me, they yell, scream or talk in this, angry way. Naruto explained. They also look at me angry. But you and Aruka sensei you two don't do this. Naruto sighed. You don't try and beat me up either. You don't try to kill me. The third almost turned angry, but it would be unreasonable to do so against a kid who didn't know any better. It's called being kind, Naruto-kun. And I am the Hokage, leader of this village. He then smiled. You can call me Serutobi. Serutobi. Naruto tested the name out. All right. I now know Serutobi, Aruka sensei and I forgot the names of the people in my genin team. Hataki Kakashi, Uchiha Sasuke and Haruno Sakura. The third helped. How come you know? Naruto asked. As the Hokage, I know everything. Naruto nodded his head, understanding. You are the leader of this village, the strongest in this village. Can you kill me, Serutobi-san? The third almost glared at Naruto, but refrained in doing so. No, I could never. Naruto turned disappointed. I see. His eyes had narrowed a great deal. If even the leader of this village cannot kill me, then becoming genin was a good choice. Maybe a leader of another village can kill me. Naruto thought, misunderstanding the sandame once again. This is so annoying. Sakura yelled as she chased after a cat, failing miserably in catching it. Sasuke simply watched her with a disapproving gaze on his face. How difficult can it be catching a cat? The Uchiha thought as his gaze landed on his blonde teammate next to it. It seems he doesn't want to go home. Naruto said, knowing he had the Uchiha's attention. Perhaps ending its life would be more appropriate? Sasuke shrugged. Perhaps. No, came the static reply through their earpieces. You will bring the cat back alive as these are the orders. Kakashi commanded from a distance, reading his favorite book once again. 
Sasuke sighed and Naruto nodded. Even if we kill it, I can bring it back to live anyway. Naruto almost seemed bored, Sasuke read. It was the first time Sasuke saw an emotion on the blonde's face other than anger when he had lied to him a week ago. Something he wouldn't do again. And what did he mean with, I can bring it back to live anyway? After an hour, the four were eating in the forest, after Kakashi had ordered Naruto and Sasuke to fetch some rabbits. Naruto was eating a rabbit's head calmly as he stared at the reading Kakashi. I wonder when we're allowed to leave the village for higher missions. Although it isn't such a waste to spend my time with these people. Compared to what I usually get. Naruto thought as he knew that at this time of the day the people living in an apartment above his would come down and give him a beating for three hours. Ultimately not killing him, but they never said they would kill him, so they weren't liars. Unlike some of them, Kakashi Sensei, Sakura suddenly piped up, will we always get missions like the ones we got today? Naruto was interested in the answer, as was Sasuke. No, eventually, we'll get bigger missions, was the simple reply. More dangerous? Naruto asked, earning a gaze from all three of his comrades. Kakashi nodded. Eventually. Naruto. Sasuke suddenly rose from the ground. Let's spar. Naruto sent him a bored look, remaining on the ground. Why? Will you try and kill me again? If so, then no, because you can't. No, to become stronger, was Sasuke's reply. Naruto frowned. Strong enough to kill me? Sakura frowned at the question, while Kakashi sighed. Sasuke was careful with his answer as it came after half a minute, if I can. I will help you, then. Naruto rose as well. He then turned to Kakashi. How can I help Sasuke become strong enough to kill me, Kakashi-sensei? Kakashi regarded the Uchiha and the Uzumaki with a cool gaze. Learn as many techniques as you can and try to outsmart each other. He said. The more techniques you learn the more vicious techniques your opponent has to use to be able to kill you. Sakura nodded at the logic, but simply didn't understand Naruto. He always talks about wanting people to kill him. And Sasuke-kun. He can't kill him because. She was hesitant in admitting it. Naruto is stronger than him. So if I learn more jutsus, my opponent will use more dangerous techniques that have a higher chance of killing me? Naruto reasoned. Kakashi nodded, while Sasuke smirked. This way, the Uchiha will get more techniques added to his arsenal. And with Naruto's regeneration skill, he will have the perfect training partner. Kakashi threw both Naruto and Sasuke a scroll and told them to leave and train. Kakashi-sensei? Sakura asked as the other two had left. Sasuke-kun and Naruto. They are so difficult to understand. Kakashi looked up from his book. No, they're not. One seeks for power and the other seeks for power strong enough to destroy him. Sakura hesitated in continuing to speak. But, what about me? Kakashi flipped a page. You need to find out what you want still. Katen, how Senka no Jutsu? Sasuke yelled, letting a dozen fireballs bounce on Naruto's figure. Naruto snorted as he continued reading the scroll in his hands, not at all affected by the fireballs. This technique is powerful. He spoke out loud. Sasuke-san, can you explain this to me? He asked in a calm voice. Sasuke, panting slightly, stopped with doing hand seals and walked over to Naruto, taking a look at the scroll. A Doton scroll. Five earth techniques. So Kakashi wants you to try the earth element, hmm? Naruto didn't respond to the question. I already know the first four. The last one is difficult. Sasuke didn't want to show his amazement. He himself had just learned the Haosenka no Jutsu. Naruto had already learned four techniques in the same time he learned one. It's a fire and earth technique in one. He grabbed his own scroll. You'll have to master this scroll first. Naruto took a look at the scroll in Sasuke's hands. You haven't mastered it yet? Sasuke grinned. This isn't the scroll Kakashi gave to me. I mastered this one a long time ago, as it only has the basic techniques of the fire element. Kakashi gave me the second volume of the fire element, so to say. Naruto nodded as he took the scroll form Sasuke's hands. This earth scroll Kakashi Sensei gave me as the first volume of the earth element, then? Sasuke shook his head. No, it's also the second volume. Which was why Sasuke was a bit irked. Naruto had basically skipped the first volume of an element that was difficult to master. Unless Naruto had the chakra affinity for earth. Continue what you were doing. 
Naruto said as he unraveled the fire scroll. Even though you are not inflicting damage on my body, your chakra amount will increase. Sasuke nodded, ready to learn the katan, Ryuka no jutsu now. Kakashi and Sakura had already gone home, but Sasuke and Naruto were still at it. Well, only Naruto, but Sasuke was resting against a tree trunk, panting his lungs out. Man, doing this all day tires you out. But how come Naruto still looks so fresh? He must have a greater stamina than I have. Naruto had mastered the basic techniques of the fire element and had learned the combination technique of the fire and earth element. He was now just walking vertically on trees, as Kakashi had instructed them do a few hours ago. They both weren't really good at it, Kakashi had remarked after watching them try. Hey, Naruto? Sasuke said as Naruto jumped down from the tree, failing to get higher than 4 meters. Naruto looked up at the kanai mark before turning to Sasuke. What is it, Sasuke-san? Naruto asked. Have you learned a new technique capable of killing me? Sasuke winced. No, Naruto turned back to the tree, almost annoyed. Then why have you called for my attention? I just wanted to know. Why do you want to die so badly? He then narrowed his eyes. And what do you have against liars, anyway? Naruto walked up the tree calmly. He never ran, as he was not a person to go hastily through life. If anything, he come close to Shikamaru's laziness. Landing again after reaching his last kanai mark, he turned to Sasuke. I live for this village. It is the village's wish that wants me dead. All villagers want me to die. He reasoned, picking up the kanai he had dropped. They are unable to kill me because they are too weak. As I live for this village, I can only abide by their wishes. I need to search for a way to be killed. He then turned to Sasuke. I am in search for someone who can kill me. Sasuke swallowed nervously, although he didn't know why. Why would the village want him dead? This useless dead last. If you can grow strong enough to kill me, then you are important to my goal, Naruto said, as for liars. Sasuke listened intently. People, hundreds of them, have claimed to take my life countless times. They failed to accomplish the village's wishes. They claim they will kill me, acting on the village's orders on my death, and yet, they fail miserably as I am still alive every night they try and kill me. He glared at nothing. These foolish people, who ignore what the village wants, who think they can kill me but can't, they are liars, they don't respect the village. Sasuke gulped as he saw Naruto's eyes turn red. Liars deserve to die. Naruto exclaimed. I will not lie when I say I will kill someone. I will accomplish everything I announce for my village. Sasuke nodded his head in understanding but really was lost on how Naruto developed this character he owned. He will do everything for a village that wants him dead? What about you? Naruto said, suddenly interested. Your ambition in life is to kill a person. Can I join that list? Sasuke sighed, rising to his feet, using the tree for support. I have to kill my older brother, Uchiha Itachi. Naruto looked at Sasuke. Can Uchiha Itachi kill me? For one of the first times in Sasuke's life, for seeing Naruto's healing capabilities, Sasuke wasn't so sure. I think he can. Naruto nodded his head. Then he is worth chasing after. Up in the trees, Kakashi couldn't help but shudder. These two have developed a strange friendship. The next day, Sasuke, Sakura and Naruto stood in front of the third Hokage, with Kakashi standing behind him. It was custom for the former teacher of the rookie genins to be aware of the missions the genins were having. As fate would have it, Amino Aruka was present as Team 7 walked in. The teacher still didn't know how to act towards the awkward Naruto and merely focused on concentrating his gaze on Sasuke and Sakura. Odd, there doesn't seem to be any bad blood between Naruto and Sasuke. Hokage-sama. Kakashi started. You have any missions for us today? Yes. Your client from yesterday wasn't satisfied with the works of your subordinates, Kakashi. The old man responded. Pulling weeds from the garden, can't be that difficult, right? Kakashi scratched the back of his head nervously. Well, Naruto created a few shadow clones and performed Henge to transform into this team. So, my team could train. Train? This gives me the impression you three don't like these missions? The third asked the members of Team 7. Naruto didn't give any response, but Sakura shook her head violently, while Sasuke shook his head once. Too bad, guys but deranked missions is what you will be. The third cut Uruka off. Actually, I have this one mission. 
an escort mission, to bring back a bridge builder to the country of the wave. I assume your team is ready for the task, Kakashi? Kakashi nodded his head. I suppose. You can come in. The third's head turned to the door right of him. Team 7 and Aruka turned their heads as well to see an old man entering the room, with a bottle of sake to his mouth. So these guys are going to protect me, hmm? Tazuna spoke. They don't look like much. Sasuke-kun. Sakura yelled, once again. Naruto almost felt sorry for Sasuke, but he didn't as he did not know how to. Kakashi was walking in the front, with Tazuna beside him. Sasuke and Sakura were in the middle. Naruto was walking at the end, knowing shinobis would usually get ambushed from behind. Perhaps there would be competent shinobis who could kill him this way. No, Sasuke replied to the, want to go shopping in wave once we get there? Question coming from Sakura. You wouldn't do much shopping in wave, anyway. Tazuna grumbled, but it was only heard by Kakashi. Naruto. Sasuke turned his head to Naruto, who was walking behind him. Did you master it? Naruto shook his head, with a frown on his face, not understanding why Sasuke always wanted to talk to him at times like this. Times where Sakura annoyed him. He didn't bother asking the question back whether the Uchiha had mastered his new scroll. Kakashi, after their tree climbing exercise yesterday night, had given both of them new scrolls, but before he gave them, he made the two genins pour chakra into this weird piece of paper. Sasuke's crumbled up a bit and Kakashi called his electricity. Naruto was split in half, so his was wind. With that, Kakashi gave them scrolls with techniques of wind and electricity. Once done, they had to switch. Kakashi had given them three scrolls each. Though both of them didn't know, Kakashi was teaching Sakura new techniques as well. Genjutsu particularly and also techniques that affected the body, like poison techniques and sleep techniques. Techniques shinobi should know, after all. I didn't either. Sasuke informed Naruto. But I'm close. Soon enough, we'll be able to beat Kakashi. You misunderstand. Naruto regarded Sasuke with a bored gaze. I learned techniques for the purpose of facing strong opponents. But not for the same reason as you. I don't train to be able to beat them. He simply had a neutral look on his face again. You go ahead and beat Kakashi by yourself. Sasuke glared at him for a few seconds, but grinned a bit after. He'll be Naruto, a cold bastard who simply wants to die. He doesn't need friends, comrades or teamwork. Someone who doesn't get useless because of emotions. Sasuke could depend on him. Suddenly in front of their eyes, their Junin instructor got ripped into shreds by chains. Naruto's eyes widened in glee. Interesting. Even his voice was tainted with amusement at this sudden development. Sasuke readied himself while Sakura was completely frozen, as was Tazuna. Getting a grip on herself, Sakura immediately jumped in front of Tazuna, while Sasuke took a look at the shinobis who killed Kakashi. As if Kakashi's killed, Sasuke thought. He's a junin, after all. Sasuke thought as he assaulted one of the demon brothers and threw a kanai to bind their chains to a tree. Sasuke kicked one of them in the face as the other raced past him towards Sakura and Tazuna. Naruto stopped the demon brother's right claw with his chest. The blonde shinobi first looked in his opponent's eyes, before he looked at the claw that had broken through his ribcage. The demon brother didn't know what to do as the blonde brat in front of him frowned. Taking his claw out of chest, he saw how the poison dripped out of the wound over his chest, out of his system and the wound healed completely. What? You have any more? Powerful techniques? Naruto asked. Other than that chain of yours and this claw? The demon brother jumped backwards while Sasuke joined Sakura in front of Tazuna. It seems you don't. Naruto continued. If you don't, then you don't deserve to even try killing me. Sakura's eyes widened as Naruto rammed a kunai straight through one of the brother's head. Naruto. Even Sasuke's eyes were widened. Everyone outside of my village is my enemy. Naruto spoke as he approached the other demon brother. If you are not strong enough to kill me, then you don't deserve to be here. Because you are a threat to my village, he said as he started performing hand seals. A hand on his shoulder stopped him. Kakashi sensei. Enough, Naruto. Kakashi said. He was a bit disturbed to see that the kanai had gone through the demon brother's head. He is pretty far with mastering his wind element. The other demon brother tried to turn and run, but Kakashi knocked him out before he could even turn. There's one left. We'll interrogate him. He turned to his team. 
Good job, Team 7. Sasuke, Sakura and Tazuna were still all shaken up. Kakashi and Sasuke started walking further in the lead, talking about electricity techniques, while Sakura, Naruto and Tazuna traveled behind them. Kid. Tazuna started. You. Have you killed before? Naruto didn't respond. Naruto. Tazuna-san asked you a question. Sakura hollered, while still looking in front of her, at Sasuke and Kakashi. It's best not to involve yourself with the clients, or so I have heard. Naruto uttered, giving Sakura a mild glare. Have you killed before, Naruto? Sakura asked for Tazuna again, this time focusing on him. Naruto shrugged a bit out of character. It was not really. My intention to kill. I expected him to heal, just as I always do. But no, I have not killed before. Sakura didn't know what to say and she could almost sense a bit of sadness in Naruto's voice. But this was Naruto, the dead last of the class who didn't care about anything or anyone, right? The one who never spoke to anyone but was hated by everyone. No one cared about him, they just hated him. Tazuna nodded his head. It's good if you didn't want to kill your opponent, kid. Taking lives is not something you should be doing on your age. Actually, it's something you never should be doing. Naruto stared at Tazuna as he had grown four heads. You don't understand. Killing is a part of living. Tazuna was a bit disturbed at that. Kid, everyone get down. Kakashi suddenly yelled. Watching Kakashi get imprisoned by water, Naruto couldn't help but shudder a bit. To be held within a place like that, you won't die, but you're forever caught. True torture. The Kayubi within him chuckled. Once, a few years ago, villagers had trapped Naruto in a small room without windows and with only one door. He didn't know where he was, but they never gave him food or water. He had found out then, that he didn't even need food or water to survive. And even when villagers had tried to suffocate him, he still lived. The possibilities were endless. The Kayubi had made sure that Naruto was not dependable upon human limitations, such as the need to breathe, eat or drink. While not fully put to the test, Naruto found out he could survive for a whole hour without air. He could survive with any food or water for a month easily. Where were his limits, and how strong was he, really? A water clone had appeared on the surface, while the real Momochi Zabuza and Kakashi were on top of the water. Zabuza's water clone was approaching them. Do you think he can kill me, Sasuke-san? Naruto whispered. Sasuke thought about the way to answer his question as sharp as the genius could. If I say yes, he'll try and let Zabuza kill him and he'll call me a liar. If I say no, he'll say that this guy isn't worth his time. I don't think so, but I believe he thinks he can. Was the answer the Uchiha gave the Uzumaki. Sakura was shivering uncontrollably, not understanding how her two teammates could be so damn calm. Naruto turned away from Sasuke and looked the water clone in the eye. Do you really think you can kill me? The water clone chuckled madly. Kid, I could so many more things, but I'm sure your empty mind wouldn't be able to handle the possibilities. He raised his sword above his head and let it pierce Naruto's left shoulder deeply. Zabuza pulled out and swung the sword right into the right side of Naruto's neck. Idiot. Zabuza mumbled as Naruto was stuck on the sword through his neck. Zabuza flung the blonde boy away, but in the corner of his eye, he noticed to his shock that the boy landed on his feet. Taking a look at the wounds he must have created, his eyes widened greatly at the absence of blood. What? Naruto simply glared. Is that all that big sword can do? His eyes turned red, Zabuza noticed. Within a second, the water clone had been ripped apart by Naruto's claws in an awesome speed. Naruto was water running towards the real Zabuza. Shit. What the hell is that kid? Zabuza yelled to Kakashi, making more water clones appear between him and the fast approaching Naruto. I hate liars. Naruto screamed, ripping through all the water clones with help from Sasuke, who released a Katen, Hausenka no Jutsu, from above. Zabuza looked in slight amazement at how easily these genins dealt with his water clones. Quite powerful, these brats. His water clones were utterly defeated and Zabuza jumped backwards to avoid Naruto's attack. While he was jumping, Sasuke had finished with some hand seals. Katen, Ryuka no Jutsu. Zabuza snorted. You idiot. The water is my home. Sweeten, Sujin Heki. The sword wielder easily made Sasuke's fire attack useless. His eyes widened though, as Naruto came jumping through Sasuke's fire and punched Zabuza hard in the face. 
On reflex, Zabuza grabbed the blonde by his neck and snapped it. Fucking brat. He said as he threw the blonde to over his shoulder. Kakashi was standing in front of him, as Zabuza chuckled shortly. You just lost one of your students. Really? Came the copy nin's reply. Zabuza heard movement from behind him and noticed Naruto standing there, completely fine. Many people have already tried breaking my neck. The way you did it was truly pathetic. Naruto uttered. I thought you were strong. Are you immortal? Zabuza asked, a bit nervous that this boy was still alive. Naruto shrugged. You simply can't kill me. Naruto jumped back to Tazuna, followed by Sasuke as the battle between Kakashi and Zabuza commenced once again. After a short 10 minutes, a hunter nin killed Zabuza just before Kakashi fainted because of chakra exhaustion. Those two kids could deal with a fatigued Zabuza san. The hunter nin thought as he was well on his way to a hiding place, with Zabuza slung over his shoulder, and Hitaki Kakashi was not tired yet. Haku could not help but wonder about the boy who got killed twice by Zabuza, but was still standing. That boy. It must be a bloodline limit. Tree walking, upside down walking under tree branches, water walking with lots and lots of weights on, you name it. They've done it all. She swore she never was as tired as she was now, panting beside her crush, who was also panting. Both were at their limits, Sakura a lot earlier than Sasuke. The remaining teammate, Naruto, was still continuing the training Kakashi design. Walking on water with your hands, while Kakashi himself was standing on Naruto's feet, reading Come Come Paradise. To anyone, this would be absurd, but to Sakura and Sasuke, they were close to getting used to it. How? How can he be the dead last? He's really much better in these things than us. Sakura whined as she saw how easy Naruto was carrying Kakashi with his feet. Sasuke simply narrowed his eyes, slowly panting less. I have to get better than him. Suddenly, Kakashi jumped off of Naruto's feet and performed hand seals. Naruto, training spar. Naruto flipped on his feet and performed hand seals as well. After many hours of training and lecturing, Naruto finally complied with the idea of having training spars, instead of only having attempts at ending his life. Katen, Gukaku no Jutsu. Too fast for the bystander's eyes, Kakashi lowered his mask and breathed a big fireball towards Naruto. Sweeten, Sujin Heki. Naruto responded, easily negating the fire attack, although he was quite curious as to how much damage Kakashi's attack would do to his body. Sasuke had his Sharingan activated, trying to comprehend the jutsus that were being performed, hoping Kakashi would show a new jutsu during this spar of theirs. Sakura simply gaped. They had done hours of training and they still had enough energy to do big jutsus like that. Even Sasuke-kun was too tired to stand up right now. How much stamina did Naruto possess? After half an hour of techniques being thrown at one another, Naruto and Kakashi stopped. Both were completely unharmed. Not bad, Naruto. Kakashi said as he patted Naruto on the shoulder and walked over to Sasuke and Sakura. This is impossible. How can he not be tired? Kakashi wondered as he had observed Naruto's neutral expression during the fight. Time to go back to Tazuna's place, guys. The Junin relayed. Who knows what might happen if we're not there. Melancholy Smile, Chapter 2. New opportunities Sakura slowly walked downstairs the next day, to find Kakashi having breakfast with Tsunami, Tazuna's daughter. The pink-haired girl could have sworn she saw Kakashi without his mask on a split second ago, but seeing as Kakashi looked the same as always, she wondered if maybe her brains were playing tricks on her eyes, and was Tsunami blushing? Good morning, Kakashi-sensei. Sakura greeted as she took a seat. Good morning, Kakashi replied, getting ready to take a book out of one of his pockets as Tsunami rose from her chair at the same time announcing she was going to make Sakura some breakfast. Sasuke-kun and Naruto. Are training again? Sakura asked uncertainly, since she somehow thought Kakashi thought she should be training as well. As if reading her mind, Kakashi responded. Yup, although I think they're overdoing it. Too much training limits your body as well. But then again. Kakashi paused. So does too little. Sakura winced. I can't keep up with them, Kakashi-sensei. Kakashi shrugged. Well, actions are usually better than words, so. Why don't you try and keep up with them? Sakura sighed. Can you help me? Your chakra control is higher than both Sasuke's and Naruto's, Sakura. Kakashi started. 
You have talents for genjutsu and quite possibly medic ninjutsu, but. He scratched his head. I'm not a great teacher in either of those things. Sakura frowned. But you can still help, right? Kakashi snorted. I'm your sensei. Of course I can help. Naruto was reading a scroll as he was seated on a sturdy tree branch. The scroll was about lightning techniques, something he had the most trouble with. He even wondered if it was even necessary to learn all these techniques. Nay, Kakashi sensei. His too neutral voice spoke through the leaves above him. These Raiden jutsus seem useless for me. Don't I know enough jutsus already? He questioned. A sigh came from above him, but Naruto didn't bother to look up. Kakashi was probably reading his book again. The more techniques you use against your enemy, the more vicious and powerful attacks your opponent will use to kill you. Chances of you getting killed will be a lot higher. You already said that. Naruto replied, almost dryly, Kakashi noted. But these lightning-based techniques don't seem to be suited, for me. Oh. Why is that? I don't know. Naruto commented honestly. They just don't. Sasuke looked up from his own scroll, which was wind-based. Actually, I seem to have the same problems. These wind techniques simply won't work, none of them have worked. Kakashi smirked as he heard a bit of frustration in Sasuke's voice, while Naruto's voice held nothing but indifference. It seems we've hit something, hmm. We know the chakra affinity the two of you possess. Electricity and wind. It's difficult to learn wind techniques if your chakra affinity is that of electricity, and vice versa. He held up a hand. But it's not impossible. He jumped down and landed next to Sasuke, who was seated on the ground, with his back leaning against the same tree Naruto and Kakashi were in. I'm heading back to see how Sakura is doing. Keep trying you too, he ordered as he vanished. Sasuke continued reading for a few seconds, until his head moved up again. Sakura. What is Sakura doing, anyway? Sasuke had turned back to his scroll when Naruto didn't respond after a few seconds. I don't know, was what came 20 seconds later. Sasuke was surprised Naruto didn't say, I don't care, but the way Naruto said it did let him know there wasn't much of a difference. After a small spar Naruto and Sasuke had, Sasuke went back to Tazuna's place and left Naruto to his training. Sasuke had said he was bored, but Naruto could see the Uchiha was exhausted. Naruto didn't really care about things like that as he walked around the forest, secretly hoping he would come across someone who could kill him. He had never bothered to let the Kayubi's chakra enhance his senses, but the demon fox had forced his chakra to Naruto's senses anyway. Therefore, he could not help but recognize the scent he was smelling right now. But he could not recall from where he knew the scent. This did encourage him to approach the one who seemed familiar. Who are you? The boy, no. The girl turned immediately towards him. Naruto narrowed his eyes a bit. It was a boy, after all. Women smelled differently, although his voice seemed a bit feminine. Uzumaki Naruto. The blonde Konoha Nin answered without caring. And you? I've smelled you before. Haku almost flinched. The kid was direct, that was for sure. My name is Haku, nice to meet you. Naruto didn't seem to understand the situation. You smell like a shinobi. I've never seen you before, but. Your scent is familiar. He then shrugged. But I don't care. You don't seem very strong, so I'll leave. Naruto then turned away. Haku chuckled. Strong? So you are strong? Naruto threw a glance over his shoulder and looked at Haku. Not at all. But neither are you. He then turned, leaving Haku confused. Nay, Kakashi sensei. Kakashi looked up from his book to see a panting Sakura in front of him. They had been training for half a day already. What can I help you with, Sakura? It's about. Sasuke kun and. Naruto, she slowly let out. Kakashi didn't look surprised and motioned for her to continue. Why does Sasuke want to become stronger so badly? Who? Does he want to kill? Kakashi seemed to ponder the question, before focusing his lazy eye on Sakura again. Well, I am not at liberty to tell, but. Even if you ask him, he won't tell. He sighed. It's important to know your teammates well, and my former teacher has told my former teammates about me as well, so. Sakura turned curious. Sasuke's entire family, his entire clan, has been done away with, by his own brother. Kakashi watched Sakura's eyes widen. The only one who his brother spared was him. Uchiha Itachi was the name of Sasuke's brother. He has become a missing nin and Sasuke wants to kill him. 
but in order to do so, he has to become a lot stronger, because Uchiha Itachi is stronger than even me. Sakura didn't respond for a few seconds, but Kakashi was surprised to hear her say, what about Naruto? Kakashi had to be careful with this one, now, what do you want to know? Why does he want to die so badly? Sakura asked, and how can he be so cheerful about it? Naruto. He has an even bigger secret than Sasuke. He has been hated by the village since he was a little child. Kakashi started. People. Tried to kill him when he was still a baby. Kakashi nodded his head as Sakura's eyes turned a bit watery while they were widened a great deal. Naruto does not know the meaning of the word, happiness, but he expresses it when there's a chance he can get killed. Sakura shook her head in disbelief. He has been through a lot of many near-death experiences, but he always recovered, always. Kakashi shuddered, it seemed, but Sakura wasn't sure. I don't really understand Naruto completely, but I think he thinks his death is for the good of the village. He lives for the village and the villagers want him dead because they hate him. Therefore, he thinks he has to die but also thinks no one in the village can pull it off. Kakashi sighed as he couldn't look Sakura in the face anymore, since she had dropped her head. He has had it rough, but I don't know if he still can be saved. Between Naruto and Sasuke, I think Naruto is the hopeless case. The next question didn't come unexpected for Kakashi. Why do the villagers hate Naruto? She then paused. Why do my parents hate him and why do I hate him? Kakashi threw it back at her. Why do you hate him? Because my parents. Sakura started and was ashamed to realize what a foolish reason that was. I don't know. Kakashi nodded his head. I cannot tell you why people hate him, Sakura. Perhaps he might answer that question if you ask him. But. Sakura looked up at Kakashi with tears in her eyes. He scares me. They both turned silent for a few minutes after that. He scares me too. Kakashi let out in a depressed tone. Days later, Naruto was extremely bored. Ice needles were piercing him from every direction, but they were simply not inflicting any damage on him. You are the boy I saw a few days ago, right? I recognize the scent now. Naruto said as he was standing next to an unconscious Sasuke. Naruto couldn't do anything, because Haku was too fast for his eyes. So he simply let Haku try and kill him, even though it seemed pretty pointless. You possess a very powerful skill, Uzumaki Naruto-san. Haku called out form every ice mirror around the blonde shinobi. The blonde didn't look at any mirror and instead focused on Sasuke. You killed him, but not me. I wonder why you torture me like this. Naruto let out. It hardly seems fair to kill him and not me, he hissed. Haku paused in a mirror. Your wish is to die? Then simply let me kill you. Many ice needles followed and Naruto sighed as none of them came even close to killing him. I'm trying to let you kill me, because you're moving too fast for me to retaliate. But you are truly pathetic. Naruto shook his head. I don't want to waste my time on someone who can't kill me. Your teacher might be able to kill me, he wondered as he started walking out of the mirrors. You won't get out of here, Haku warned as he threw more ice needles at him. He was shocked to see Naruto simply walk out of the mirrors, his ice needles not affecting him at all. Damn, no one has defeated my ultimate technique this badly. Who is this boy? Haku then cancelled his technique and stood in front of Naruto. Naruto frowned as the boy bowed his head. My strongest technique has failed on you and I have no hope of defeating you. I have lost my purpose if I cannot stop you. Please, kill me. Naruto simply stared. I don't care about you. I only care about me and people who can kill me. It's not important for me to kill you, because. You've never wanted to kill me, it seemed. Or maybe your techniques were simply. That weak. Haku wasn't offended. You are powerful. I concede, please, kill me. Naruto shook his head. Perhaps you can kill me, if you try harder? Haku rose from his bowing form and took on a confused expression. You really wish to be killed? Even though you are this powerful and still so full of purpose? Naruto frowned and seemed a bit annoyed. Yes. Haku then turned sad. Your eyes. They carry a lot of pain, much more than even mine. He let out. But I cannot kill you, because I already used my strongest technique on you. And even then, I could not kill you, for you have won my respect. Naruto sighed and nodded his head. At least you are honest. He then turned away from Haku and walked towards the fighting Zabuza and Haku. Sakura was still guarding Tazuna. 
I will not kill someone who is as honest as you. He called out as he left Haku, simply standing there. Minutes later, Kakashi, Naruto, Sakura and Tazuna stood in front of Zabuza and Haku, both still alive. Gatu had been killed by Haku, who was protecting Zabuza. Naruto had become jealous at how easily Gatu had been killed. Sasuke was draped over Kakashi's shoulder, he was still alive as well. Uzumaki Naruto-san. Haku started. We will part ways. But. I hope we will meet each other again. Your existence is based on ending it. Perhaps next time, I can fulfill your wish. Both expected, but more unexpected, Naruto grinned at Haku. Perhaps, Haku-san. I can only hope. Haku then held out his hand, but Naruto didn't understand and simply turned away. Despite that, it seemed Haku understood Naruto's character a bit, and smiled at his back as he walked away. Perhaps I can help you, yes. Again, Kakashi shuddered at the weird friendship Naruto had created, while Sakura seemed to try and understand Naruto more. Back in Konoha, Team 7 got assigned to more D-ranked missions and thing went back to normal for a while, until one day, Kakashi arrived on time with three forms in his hands. My students, I have signed you in for the Chunin exams. Kakashi started. You can decide whether to take these or not. He handed each of his students a form. It can be a very dangerous exam, this one. You can get killed, even. Kakashi said, hoping it would make Naruto take it, but also hoping Sakura wouldn't get discouraged. Sakura cringed only a little bit, but didn't seem as nervous as Kakashi thought she'd be. Sasuke and Naruto were both grinning as Kakashi had expected them to be. This will be good. Kakashi thought. Well, I'm off. We won't be having a mission today and we won't be training either. Today is a day off. You can find all the information about the exams on the forms. Later, with the all too familiar sound of a smoke cloud, Kakashi was gone. This will be good. Sasuke said as he was walking away from Team 7's meeting point, actually following Naruto, who always simply walked away when he wanted to. Sakura followed as well. Chunin exam. Naruto whispered. Chunins are weak, too. Naruto said as he remembered how easily he had defeated Mizuki. I hope I won't be disappointed. Ah, Sasuke-kun. Want to get something to eat? Sakura asked in between. We can talk about this Chunin exam and... No, Sasuke cut her off. Sakura dropped her head in sadness as Sasuke took a look at her and Naruto. I'm going home. Tomorrow is the first day of the exam, I expect to see you there. With that, the Uchiha was gone as well. Hey. Um, how about you, Naruto? Naruto was reading the form in his hands and didn't respond. Naruto? Sakura asked cautiously. Want to get something to eat? You seem rather worried about this, Kakashi. Kakashi shrugged. It's something pretty important, after all. Chunins can pull it off and he is rather. Unstable. The third Hokage chuckled shortly. You don't have to worry, Kakashi. His mental state is more powerful than anything I have encountered before. Kakashi didn't seem all that convinced. How come you are so sure, Hokage-sama? He has to keep the Kayubi under control while he wants to die so badly. Who knows when he goes? Berserk. How can you be so certain? Morino Ibiki. Was his reply, on which Kakashi's eye widened. What? Did he do? The third chuckled again. No need to worry, Kakashi. We've put simple genjutsus on Naruto, but it seems his mind is too broken to respond to mind games. The only ones capable of doing more. Disastrous genjutsus on a person are Mitarashi Anko and Yuhi Kuranai. They both have put some genjutsus on Naruto as well in the past, during his sessions with Ibiki. Kakashi didn't seem satisfied with this at all. What did you do to him? The Sandame sighed sadly. I didn't do anything. Naruto had challenged Ibiki into a fight and Ibiki had immediately cast a genjutsu on the boy. Naruto didn't even seem to notice as he continued demanding Ibiki to kill him. Ibiki, being the sadistic bastard that he is, had found the perfect lab rat. Too perfect. Not even one of his genjutsu techniques worked, and I forbid him to use any torture techniques on the boy. Ibiki simply didn't understand and asked for Anko's support. What happened? Kakashi asked. Anko pulled Kuranai along and the three of them investigated Naruto's state of mind. And? The third turned in his chair to look out the window. Naruto's state of mind or lack of state of mind. He wants nothing else but to die for this village. 
and since he has the Kyubi torturing him about how he can never die. He has already landed in the worst case scenario for him. It isn't the matter of being tortured or feeling pain anymore. And that's what Genjutsu is all about. Naruto is completely immune for Genjutsu, simply. Because he doesn't care about what happens to him. Kakashi's look hardened. What has Konoha done to him? The third nodded. Indeed. Sasuke was reading a scroll in the Uchiha mansion. With this, perhaps he can become ultimately stronger. But, it might take a while. To gain the Mangekyu Sharingan, you have to break the bonds of your precious persons and lose everything. Can he do this? He wondered if he even had precious persons left. The only one who he could call a friend was probably Uzumaki Naruto. And even with that, Naruto would not call him his friend. Simply someone who held the capability to kill him in the future. Sasuke wondered if Naruto can be killed. His regeneration skills were just too good. Even a good swipe with Zabaza's sword at his neck was futile. Could he kill Naruto when the time was there? I have to. Sasuke said to himself, full of determination. Before I can kill Itachi, I have to kill Naruto. Two shinobis were walking through Konoha, on some kind of Rikan mission. Only to find that this village was extremely peaceful. Completely unlike their own village. Konkuru, do you know where he has gone? I don't even want to know. Konkuru spoke back to his sister. I feel sorry for the people who are in his way right now. Tamari nodded her head. Still, we should be keeping in touch with each other. Konkuru snorted. Why don't you tell him that? And suddenly, behind them, they felt a sudden spike in chakra presences. Both turned to see Gara talking with a blonde-haired and a pink-haired Konoha shinobi? Naruto, we should go home. We just got back from Ichiraku Ramen, the pink-haired one said. Gara simply glared at Naruto, while Naruto spoke up. You seem strong. Naruto started. Can you kill me? Gara's eyes twitched. There was something really strange with this blonde kid. Tamari and Konkuru hastily approached them. Gara, Konkuru yelled. They are Konoha ni. Shut up. Konkuru, Sakura and Tamari all froze as Gara and Naruto said those two words in a very creepy fashion at the same time. Gara's killer intent was freezing them, except Naruto, who couldn't experience fear. Gara and Naruto glanced at each other. I am Sabaku no Gara. Who are you? Uzumaki Naruto. Gara grinned. You seem strong as well. The red-haired Suna Nin then glared at him. I will kill you during the Chunin exam. Uzumaki Naruto. Then, Gara walked past Naruto. Let's go. He ordered Tamari and Konkuru. Naruto looked at Gara's back. I'm excited. He spoke to Sakura. Sakura simply shivered. That guy is just as scary as Naruto. No one ever told her she was a silent kid. Hell, people thought she was loud, extremely so when Uchiha Sasuke was around. But in the presence of someone like Uzumaki Naruto, her senses simply told her to be quiet. Even that strange voice in her head that pops out every now and then, was completely silent. As they were both eating ramen, Naruto in a very normal way and Sakura in a pretty rushed way, she noticed that the entire ramen stand they were seated in was quiet. Except for the boiling water. You want another bowl, miss? A young girl asked her, disturbing the strange silence. Sakura looked up from her bowl and her musings to notice Ayame, the daughter of Tuchi, owner of the ramen stand. No, thanks, she said a bit cheerily. I am done eating as well. Naruto suddenly spoke up. He then turned from Ayame to Sakura. This was weird. He then rose from his seat, put down money to pay for both him and Sakura, she dully noted, and headed for the exit, with Sakura hurrying after him. And Naruto, wait. Once outside, Naruto looked at Sakura, before looking around. This Chunin exam. I hope I won't be disappointed. Sakura shivered, knowing how he would become just that. The Chunin exam. Only the best genin from every village participate. I'm sure there will be lots of powerful people. Naruto nodded. Then I suggest you try and kill me as well. Sakura's eyes widened. Why? She slowly let out, petrified by his advice. Sasuke has grown a lot in trying so. Perhaps if you do the same, you will become a lot stronger as well. He gave her one last look. Don't hold back. Sakura's eyes were still widened as Naruto froze several feet away from her. Another boy, standing in front of him, was frozen as well. They were both eerily alike. Naruto, who seemed to radiate coldness, 
his chakra even an ice-cold blue, was frozen in. Excitement? The other boy, Sakura observed, was a Sunanin with red hair. The expression of pure indifference etched upon his face let her know he could be Naruto's equal. After a staring contest, the Sand Shinobi chose to glare at Naruto, while Naruto suddenly grinned. You seem strong, can you kill me? The redhead seemed to snarl a bit, Sakura couldn't tell. To her left, she saw two other Sand Nins rushing towards Gara. Probably the boy's teammates, all three here for the Chunin exam most likely. Gara, The one with the paint all over his face yelled, their Konoha ni. And suddenly, they were frozen in their tracks. Sakura herself included. The killer intent was higher than she felt from him, but what was more disturbing was that the red-haired Suna Nin was releasing an equal amount of it, doubling the danger. Shut up. They both coldly let out. The message was perfectly clear. These two were destined to fight each other and no one was allowed to interfere. After what seemed like a decade, Naruto and Gara stared at each other again. I am Sabaku no Gara. Who are you? Naruto smiled in satisfaction. Uzumaki Naruto. Gara returned the smile, or grin. You seem strong as well. The smile vanished and was replaced by a glare. I will kill you during the Chunin exam, Uzumaki Naruto. Gara turned from Naruto to his teammates. Let's go. Sakura was too confused to react as Naruto spoke up again. I'm excited. As Naruto turned to leave, Sakura couldn't help but think as she stared at the three Suna Nins. That guy is just as scary as Naruto. Melancholy Smile, Chapter 3, Demon Meeting, Interesting. Sakura looked up from her spot to see Sasuke stand on the roof of the ramen stand. Sasuke-kun? Sasuke jumped down and landed next to Sakura. He's made a new friend, hmm. A powerful one, too. He said as his glance landed on Gara's back. I suggest you take Naruto's advice and try and kill him. He ignored Sakura's gasp. It's the fastest way to become strong. Sakura wanted to say more, but Sasuke was already gone. Naruto hadn't felt this sensation often, but he liked it. There was at least one person worth facing during this exam. Sabaku no Gara from the Sand Village. It was a strange feeling, this chill running over his body. Excited, right? Naruto didn't even turn as Sasuke joined him down the road. Yes, this Chunin exam might not be so bad. Sasuke nodded his head. Indeed. Let's go train some more. Naruto snorted. You can't kill me anyway, but it doesn't hurt, to keep trying. Sasuke snorted back. I guess so. I'll join. Both Sasuke and Naruto turned around to see Sakura standing there, with a determined look on her face. But I won't try and kill you, Naruto. Naruto frowned while Sasuke shook his head, but I'll do my best, to defeat you. Naruto continued frowning, while Sasuke smirked. Let's start, then. Sasuke was impressed. What had Kakashi been training her in? The genjutsus she was casting were not bad at all. It was draining a lot of chakra from his Sharingan to dispel them. He was panting slightly, even. You bore me. Naruto started. These illusions do nothing else. Sasuke watched as Sakura ran towards Naruto, who had yet to move away. His Sharingan observed chakra being gathered in her fist. The blow was unexpected, to all but Sakura. It was enough to crush bones, that was for sure. As Naruto flew straight through a tree and was slammed through half a boulder, he couldn't help but be slightly amazed. Sasuke had winced. Kakashi taught her well. Her excellent chakra control allows her to do things like this using chakra to strengthen her blows. But it took a lot of chakra to do so, as seen on Sakura's tired expression and twitching hands. But then again, she had already cast a few genjutsus on both him and Naruto. Yes, he was slightly impressed and wondered whether he needed to be able to things like that as well. Naruto plucked himself out of the boulder, his face completely fine again. I suggest you hit me harder next time. Naruto voiced as he performed hand seals. My turn. Before he could, though, Sasuke appeared in front of him and kicked him in the stomach, following up with roundhouse kick that sent him upwards. Sasuke performed lighting fast hand seals after that. Katen, Karyu Enden. Sakura's eyes were filled with disbelief. That jutsu was truly powerful. As Sasuke finished the awesome fire technique, he saw Naruto landing on the ground several feet away from him, with burnt clothes. Other than that, he was perfectly fine. 
If Naruto performs techniques against Sakura, it might be dangerous. He pours way too much chakra in his attacks. Sasuke thought. This Chunin exam probably needs all three of us to enter, so he can't kill Sakura right now. He glanced at Naruto. Come at me, Naruto. Naruto remained standing, a bored look on his face. He performed a few hand seals. Futen, Rankuden. Sasuke's eyes widened. That wind blasts going for me and Sakura. He turned and ran toward Sakura. I won't be able to make it to Sakura. He turned over his shoulder and noticed he had to jump. Now. Sakura, jump. Shocked by the massive wind blast, Sakura remained on the ground. Until Kakashi interfered and pulled Sakura out of the way. After dusting himself off and shaking Sakura back into the land of the living, the Junin stared hard at Naruto. Naruto. Kakashi started. Don't use such powerful techniques on your teammates. Ever. Naruto frowned. This technique wasn't that powerful. Kakashi sighed. It could have killed Sakura. It was short, but Kakashi saw understanding in Naruto's eyes. Quote dot dot dot. I see. This is an interesting spar right here. Kakashi said as all of them calmed down. I'll join. Me and Sakura against you too. Sasuke smirked. Hey, now we hold the possibility to take Kakashi down. Or do we? Sasuke gathered a lot of chakra in his eyes and got ready. Naruto simply stood there. Let's begin. After having stolen the show from the Konoha genins known as Lee, Neji and Ten Ten, Sasuke found himself face to face with Lee. After forcing two chunins to dispel their genjutsu, the two seemed to have acknowledged each other's strengths. You are Uchiha Sasuke, Lee exclaimed. Will you fight me? Sasuke snorted shortly. Have you ever faced anyone with the Sharingan? Lee shook his head. No, but geniuses will be defeated with hard work. Sasuke snorted and stepped forward until a hand on his shoulder stopped him. Allow me. Sasuke frowned as his teammate stepped past him. Naruto? Naruto nodded his head. This genin holds a lot of stamina. You two fighting will result in you getting tired. I don't need an exhausted teammate during these exams. While I don't really care about you losing or winning, I do care about becoming chunin. Naruto sent a bored gaze at the weird genin in front of him. A chunin gets more dangerous missions. Lee examined Sasuke's teammate and noticed nothing out of the ordinary, except for the blonde's dead eyes. Excuse me, but I am not interested in fighting you, he let out. I wish to fight only Uchiha Sasuke. I am stronger than Sasuke, Naruto said. Unbeknownst to him, Sasuke felt a bit annoyed at the statement, even though it was true. Lee suddenly had shiny eyes as he noticed Sasuke didn't deny the statement. Very well. And then he rushed forward. Naruto noticed that this Lee guy was even faster than Haku, the ice warrior he had faced a week ago. Lee easily bypassed Naruto's defense and hit him squarely in the face. To Lee's surprise though, the blow didn't seem to truly be received. This guy's strong. My blows seem too weak. After trying every combo he could think of, he realized Naruto was not hurt at all. Lee stopped moving in front of Naruto and bowed in respect. It seems I can not hurt you like this. May I know your name? Naruto glanced over at Naruto and Sakura, before facing Lee again. Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto-kun. I will fight you more seriously now. My name is Rock Lee. Naruto didn't seem interested at all in why Rock Lee was loosing the bandages around his wrists. A bystander watched all of this but chose not to interfere. Circling around him in awesome speed, Lee made the move and noticed that it had sent Naruto flying. Following him in air, Lee used the cage buyu. Sasuke noticed. Wrapping the bandages around Naruto's body, they were spinning crazily, until Lee smashed Naruto into the ground with massive power. Omit Renge, Lee yelled. There was no delay at all as Naruto jumped up from the crater in the ground and turned to the panting Lee, completely unharmed. You do not hold the power to kill me, Rock Lee. Nor do you have the power to defeat me. Naruto then glared at him. You do not interest me, so I suggest you don't try and face me team again. Lee was shocked, completely shocked. No one should be able to walk away from his lotus move without any scratches. Yet here this guy was standing, completely fine, except for his clothes. You. How? He let out between breaths. Lee wanted to ask more, but Naruto had appeared in front of him. Usually, Lee would be able to dodge attacks like this easily, but he had just used the Omit Renge, so he was hurting. 
Lee got smashed into the wall behind him. Lee coughed once before he readied himself for another attack. Naruto simply turned away, followed by his team. As Lee watched them go, a Junin appeared beside him. Lee. Lee turned to see Guy, his Junin instructor, standing right next to him. Guy Sensei. That boy. Not even your ultimate move will work on him. He let out, on which Lee's eyes widened incredibly. Yes. I think even Neji doesn't stand a chance against him. Oh, look who's here. It's the stuck-up bastard. Shino winced as Sakura hit Kiba in the face with. Strength his bugs told him to fear. Inwardly, Shino was shaking his head at Kiba's antics, something he had been doing since they were in the same team. Hanada looked worried for Kiba as she slowly walked towards him. Don't you dare refer to Sasuke-kun with names like that. Sakura hissed and Shino was sure he sensed chakra around her fists. His bugs told him they really wanted to drain that chakra, that perfectly organized chakra. His bugs suddenly died down in activity, though, as the remaining team member of Team 7 walked in. Shino's eyes narrowed behind his eyes. He has gotten powerful. Shino mused. Before, he simply neglected his training because he couldn't get harmed. Shino's bugs were quite intelligent. But his Junin instructor seemed to have convinced him to start training. Naruto was just standing there, arms hanging limply by his sides as he stared towards all the other participants for this Chunin exam. He didn't radiate any killer intent, but Shino knew better. That one has to be avoided during this Chunin exam. It was a good thing he didn't care for a lot of things. Threats did nothing to him. Warnings didn't even seem to reach his ears. This test was ridiculous. Although he couldn't even answer any of the questions, he found himself not caring at all about this test. This person, Morino Ibiki, he knew the guy and his games. His pathetic genjutsus which seemed to drain more chakra from the old guy than himself. This was all just a game again. Not genjutsu, but still a game. He couldn't wait until he could face Sabaku no Gara. Naruto had already spotted him in this classroom. This exam was going to be good. Although he held no expectations, he still looked forward to it. Gara, a shinobi from another country, had told him he would kill him. He had better not be lying. The Forest of Death, a name that clicked well within his mind. Naruto wore a grin on his face when the special Junin, Mitarashi Anko, had announced the name of the forest before them. It didn't go unnoticed by his teammates. Naruto? Sakura nervously started. Naruto rarely smiled, after all, are you okay? Naruto even chuckled shortly at that. I'm fine. Sasuke sighed, understanding Naruto's excitement. We better stick together, though. The goal is to gather scrolls. So we'll be attacked by three shinobis. Splitting up is not an option. Sakura nodded. We need to pick out a team that looks weak. Perha. The team from the sand. Naruto interrupted. I'll look for them. I don't care what you two do. Sasuke looked a bit irked to find he had been ignored for the most part of his short speech before. Fine, I'll go with you. He seems to be the only interesting one in this exam anyway. Sasuke gave in, on which Sakura turned even more worried. You guys have weapons with you. Sakura nodded, while Naruto shook his head. I don't need weapons. The gates open for them. Let's go. Naruto's eyes were red, Sakura and Sasuke noticed. Tamari and Konkuru were not worried at all. Their little brother was with them, after all. He was Suna's ace and he would hold his end of the bargain definitely, because he was Gara, the demon Shukaku, as many saw him. This Chunin exam was nothing. Everyone present did not even stand a chance against them, let alone Gara. Except for that one, but Gara would handle him, he's coming. Tamari looked sideways to see a maniacal grin on Gara's face. He's using the sand armor, but still his insane expressions are showing through. He must be really excited. She looked ahead of herself and felt several chakra signatures approaching. This could become dangerous, after all. Konkuru sighed as he skidded to a halt on the ground. Shinobi from Konoha, three of them. He informed his brother and sister. It's, he turned to Tamari, that one. Sasuke landed in front of the trio first, Sharingan fully loaded. Next to him, Naruto landed sloppily. His eyes were filled with amusement as he pointedly ignored Tamari and Konkuru and gazed at Gara. Behind the two Konoha nins, Sakura stood a bit nervously, but Chakra was already being gathered around her fists. Uzumaki Naruto, you and I will fight now. Gara stated before he faced his siblings, do not interfere. 
Sasuke smirked. Sakura, let me handle the other two. I need a warm-up. Konkuru snorted. A warm-up? Kid, you don't know who you're facing. We already know all about the Sharingan. Sasuke shrugged. Then why are you not surrendering? Facing an Uchiha means certain defeat, after all. Temuri's panic settled in as she noticed Gara and Naruto were itching to fight, both releasing killer intent unlike any she ever felt before. Be careful, Gara. He seems to be stronger than any other shinobi you have faced, she thought. It came as a shock. The killer intent froze all of them, it was simply too much. Only Naruto and Gara could move now. Sabaku Q. Naruto allowed the sand to grab him. Gara grinned with bloodshot eyes. Sabaku Susu. The satisfying sound of bones crushing gave Gara's ears a limitless sense of satisfaction. Until. The sand moved. Chakra shot the sand all around him and freed Naruto from his grasp. Interesting. You can crush all of my bones at once, but it didn't kill me. What else can you do? Naruto said as he seemed completely fine. Gara's eyes widened. No one ever has survived this attack of his. But then, he grinned. This kill would give him a lot more pleasure than his usual killings. Uzumaki Naruto, you amuse me greatly. Temuri's and Konkuru's eyes were widened and filled with disbelief. This guy survived Gara's desert graveyard and looked completely fine even. They were facing someone on equal grounds with Gara. What's worse, it seems Gara was about to transform. And neither of his siblings could stop him, because they were too affected by the killer intent. But then again, even without that, they still wouldn't be able to stop him. Naruto's eyes opened up a bit more in recognition as weird chakra seemed to circle around Gara. You, can use this chakra as well. Gara simply ignored him as sand was slowly surrounding him and protecting him. In a matter of moments, Naruto could only see a sphere of sand. He seemed a bit bored and turned towards Gara's teammates. You two are just as pathetic as my teammates. To think you have a powerful teammate such as Gara. You are very fortunate. He can kill easily. But then the blonde's eyes narrowed. But can he kill me? The sphere of sand exploded into nothingness and Naruto licked his lips as he saw Gara's transformed right arm. Gara's eyes narrowed as Naruto seemed to have changed a bit as well. Yes, his eyes, they were blood red. And the chakra around Naruto was the same as his? I am told that if I fight my opponent with the best of my ability, they, in turn, will do their best as well, to end my fighting, my existence. Naruto uttered, a hopeful tone added to his voice. Gara chuckled dangerously. Yes, to prove my existence I will end yours. Naruto chuckled back. Let's go, then, Gara's eyes widened. He didn't expect the blonde to be so quick. Even Sasuke was astounded to see Naruto this powerful. Sakura couldn't even follow his movements. Bone shattering, that's how powerful the blow given to his nose was. Gara was sent into a tree and wasn't getting up soon. Naruto simply followed up and grabbed him by the face, the red chakra around his body releasing a massive lust for torture. Gara screamed in pain as Naruto rammed his fist through his chest, the poisonous chakra of the Kayubi entering his system. Arg. Coughing out blood, Gara swiped wildly with his arms to get Naruto's claw out of his chest. Naruto jumped backwards and grinned. You. Don't die easily either, hmm. Naruto chuckled, but was disappointed as Gara struggled in pain. What's wrong? Are you not used to pain? Tamari was filled with fear at how easily this individual was handling Gara. This guy. Just what is he? Konkuru, too, was petrified. Konoha shinobis are, like this? Sakura shuddered at how demonic Naruto seemed to be with the malicious red chakra around him, she felt, worried? Ughh. Gara slowly rose to his feet. Shukaku's chakra was fighting hard to deal with the poisonous chakra Naruto had entered into his body. What? Did you do? He dropped to his knees, his body burning in pain. Poison? Run away, child. He is the Kayubi. We don't stand a chance. His mother screamed. Run as fast as you can, he will obliterate us. Gara didn't understand. Mother was never afraid. But he now knew it. This kid was something else. Uzumaki Naruto. I. Give in. Surrender. Admit defeat or he will kill us. He coughed out blood. The Shukaku was succeeding in getting rid of the Kayubi's poison, but it might take a while. You. Or. Naruto sighed, the red in his eyes darkening. You said you would kill me, weakling. 
It was too much. This stranger called their little brother a weakling. Konkuru and Tamari didn't know what to even think. Until, Sasuke started moving. Naruto. Let me deal with them. He let out, finally free from the bind. I could use some training. Naruto glared at Sasuke. Gara will be my kill. You can have the other two. Sasuke nodded and rushed forward. Konkuru did whatever he could to break free and just managed as he blocked Sasuke's kick to his head. He immediately launched his puppet at Sasuke, sending him upwards. Naruto watched the two fight. Glad they were taking the fight somewhere else. He had no need for interruptions to kill another liar. Ready to die, Sabaku no Gara. Awaken, child. Speak. Make a deal. Do something, he will kill us, the Shukaku screamed. I concede defeat. Gara let out with a struggle. He still couldn't move his body because of the poison, but he was surely recovering. You are more powerful than I am. Naruto chuckled. A bit too late for then, hmm. Release me, let me out. Naruto's eyes widened a bit as Gara was suddenly surrounded by smoke and seconds later, he was towering above him in another form. A demon. Naruto suddenly laughed like a madman. How suitable. Yes, a demon surely can kill another demon. Kill me. Tanuki Niri no Jutsu. Naruto sensed the sudden change in chakra and just couldn't wait. Attack me. Try and kill me, demon. No. Confusion hit him in full force. No? The Shukaku looked down upon Naruto and shook its head. Kayubi no Yuko. I will not release futile attempts at taking your life. I cannot defeat nor kill you. He calmly let out, but his voice was full of respect, Naruto noted. Please, spare our lives. Allow us to become allies. Naruto seemed to consider him. You seem different. I am the Shukaku. The demon within Gara. Within Gara, hmm. Just like me, then. Naruto let realization hit him. You, at the moment, hold the highest capability. You're the one who's the closest to being able to kill me. He chuckled. Train, train. Grow stronger and try and kill me, then, Shukaku. Until then, we shall be allies. I will not end your existence today. Thank you, Kayubi no Yuko. Shukaku bowed its head. What is your human name? Uzumaki Naruto. I owe you greatly, Uzumaki Naruto. Train your vessel well, Shukaku. Naruto let out, on which the Shukaku nodded. With that Shukaku released the transformation and Gara, surprisingly landed on his feet. The poison was now out of his system and he gazed towards Naruto. To Temuri's complete shock, Gara bowed. Until we meet again, Uzumaki Naruto. Free form the killer intent, Tamari and Sakura could move again. Do not engage with them, Tamari. He can kill us all. Easily. Tamari dumbly nodded as Konkuru and Sasuke landed in the clearing. Gara? Konkuru asked as he was ready to face off with Sasuke again. Cease your attacks. The red-haired Suna Nin ordered. We will move again. He is far more powerful than you can imagine. Konkuru noticed Gara was addressing Naruto and nodded, understanding they would be killed if they didn't move now. We will meet again, Uchiha Sasuke. And then, I will defeat you. Gara walked towards Naruto and handed him their scroll. He then bowed again and without a word, left them. Naruto, Sakura and Sasuke watched them move away. From a small distance, Orochimaru had watched it all. He would be unable to move now, for Anbu were already on the way to investigate the awesome power being displayed just before. Enraged, Orochimaru turned away and vowed to approach Uchiha Sasuke on another day soon. Shaken, Sakura let out a sigh of relief and noticed her surroundings. Her lack of surroundings. Still, she was getting used to it, surprisingly. Sha shall we move? Sasuke shook his head. They want explanation. Naruto sighed and Sakura looked a bit dumbfounded. Until Anbu.